Hey guys, Chris here with The Good Old Gamer. So the age of rampant rumors and speculation is finally done and over with. NVIDIA have revealed the RTX 2080 Ti, 2080, and 2070 GPUs. Now, we had a pretty good idea that this was coming, and Jensen started off the presentation by saying all the leaks were false. Well, luckily, if you guys saw our my last video on this, my guy apparently had the right numbers. So, woohoo! I got a source, and they are obviously pretty good. But anyway, moving on. Today is obviously a big day for anybody in the GPU market, and there are a lot of reasons why that this launch is different than other launches. I've seen a lot of reactions so far, and they range wildly. Some people are very excited, some people aren't, but it seems like a lot of people don't really comprehend what's happening here. And this is a pretty multifaceted launch compared to the typical launches. So that's what we're going to go over today. We're going to take a little bit deeper dive into this. Um, I don't have all the footage, so this is going to be broken up into a couple of different videos throughout the week. For example, I can't talk about the games that were shown at Gamescom because I don't have the footage for that yet. It's just not uploaded yet because this just happened uh, about two hours ago. And uh, yeah, so it's just not available. So today we're just going to go over kind of the hard numbers and what this all really means. So go ahead, stick around and check it out. So starting off with the big elephant in the room, we're going to talk about pricing. So as you can see from this blurry picture right here, we have the RTX 2080 Ti starting out at $999. So this is up from $699 on the Pascal version. We have the GeForce RTX 2080 starting off at $699, which that is typically where the 20 or the X80 CPUs typically launch here recently. This is where the 1080 also launched at. And then we have the RTX 2070 from 499. So this is actually up a pretty significant bit. Now, this is from. This means this is the lowest possible price. This is not what they're actually going to be selling for. Going over to Nvidia's website, you can pre-order these GPUs starting off at 1199 for the G Sorry, RTX 2080 Ti. Keep wanting to call it GTX, and if I do, please bear with me. This is new. I've been calling them GTX forever. Uh, the RTX 2080 at 799 and the RTX 2070 at 599 Now, we will talk about why this is particularly interesting here in just a little bit. So, first off, you have the shipping date, which is 9-20-2018 for both the 2080 and 2080 Ti. There's no date on the 2070, which I find a little bit interesting. So, not really sure when that's coming out. Over here on video cards, they do have it broken up as prices are different over there in Europe. So, obviously, these are going to be a little bit different depending on where you live. But these are supposed to be the AIB card prices. So this is exactly the same thing that they did with their 10 series launch. And these numbers right here did not come to fruition until after market saturation hit. So these cards will sell at least at the $1199 price point for the 2080 Ti and at least $799 for the foreseeable future. Now if you are getting them day one, you might be able to get some of the AIB cards a little bit closer to these prices, but I wouldn't expect them to be there long or at these prices exactly. So probably somewhere in between. That's what happened last time. I expect nothing different this time around. Now, going back to the last video that I did on the RTX lineup, after we got the Quattro RTXs last week, I went ahead and put a lot of emphasis on the actual die size and the core, because this is what's the big change this time around. Now, a lot of you guys are freaking out over those price points, but look at the size of this die. So we, we're going up from a 471 millimeter square die up to a 754 millimeter square die. I mean, realistically speaking, you cannot expect these two GPUs to cost the same amount. Bringing out our handy dandy calculator, we take 754 divided by 471. So this is 60% larger 
than the Pascal die. This is huge. This is a monstrous piece of technology. So if we go ahead and do a little bit more math here, so we take even, let's go to the high side, 1199 divided by uh, 699, which was the MSRP for the 1080 Ti, we're looking at a 71% increase in cost. So that is definitely on the high side of things. This is more than just paying for the larger die, but you are also paying for new technology. Now, looking at this die shot, I mean, Pascal was basically just this little part right here. We now have two new sets of cores on these GPUs. This is the reason why it's so large is because basically it's the same manufacturing process. So the only thing that they could do is just make it bigger. But now you have RT cores and you have tensor cores. Granted, the SMs, the standard FP32 cores, really don't appear to have changed that much. We don't really know too much on that just yet until somebody starts testing these. Nobody will really know for sure if there's any architectural or IPC improvements here, or GPC, if you want to call it that. Um, but obviously, this is not comparable to Pascal. Now, as I just mentioned, since Turing technically is not one-to-one -one comparable to something like Pascal or Vega or any other previous architecture out there because it is more of an SOC. It has different parts to it that do different things that we've never had before. NVIDIA has made up kind of their own sort of benchmarking number for this instead of our standard FP32 teraflops that we've been using for a while now, which is basically just a combination of how many compute cores you have at times the clock speed or times two times the clock speed if you want to be perfectly accurate with that. But regardless, they're starting to call this performance level RTX Ops, which I guess, you know, ray tracing operations, something to that effect, does kind of make sense. And on the high end, so this would be considered the 2080 Ti, they have 78 trillion ray tracing operations per second. So I think that that's a pretty fair way to name this as that is what they're going for here. And it's not really so much what the frames per second you're getting is, it's how much ray tracing that you can do. Now, whether or not you really care about this is going to be the big deal. And we're gonna go ahead and talk about that in my conclusions. Unfortunately, I don't have the gameplay footage to show you guys here. I'll go ahead and go over that in another video. But what NVIDIA is really doing with this GPU lineup is they are building their walled garden even higher. If you thought that something like G-Sync was meant to keep you within a confined space, that's exactly what they're doing here. But at the same time, is there really another way to do it? NVIDIA has created software that specifically utilizes this new hardware that they're giving to you or selling to you. They're not giving you shit here. Uh, but... That's not really a bad thing. I mean, obviously they built the hardware, they need the software to go ahead and take advantage of that. And since this is new technology to the point where there's nothing else comparable to it at this particular point in time, that they had to go ahead and implement the software. I'm actually pretty impressed that they went ahead and actually have it working, even if it is shoehorned in a bit in gaming today, but Rise or Shadows of the Tomb Raider is actually coming out next month and that will have some form of RTX support. But once again, if you don't have the NVIDIA hardware, you will not be able to get these features. Something like the uh, GF Physics, it probably makes the most sense. If you don't have their hardware, you can't utilize that feature within the games. And this can lead to a, another divide within the PC gaming market, because if you guys remember back in the day, way back when, uh, back in the DOS days when 3D accelerators were new, you would literally have to buy a special version of the game for your GPU. Basically, there was like a 3DFX version, there was like an AMD version of games. MechWarrior 2 is the one that comes to mind because there was like 18 different versions of that game, each one developed specifically for different GPUs. Now, I don't think we're going to get that far into it, but it almost seems like there's going to be specific API features that only these RTX cards will be able to utilize and everything else will be left out in the cold. Now, from NVIDIA's perspective, that's a good thing because now you have to buy these brand new 
very expensive cards, and it does make their opponents, both Intel in the future and AMD currently, look like, hey, maybe I'll be missing out on features. So this is something exclusive to them. But once again, this is kind of like the Apple mentality. This isn't anything new. This is something Nvidia has been doing across the board. They want you in their ecosystem and they don't want to play with the other guys. They want to separate themselves as much as possible. And this will most certainly do that. Speaking of AMD, I want to go ahead and touch on this real quick. The comments out there that my brand new NVIDIA GPU costs so much and it's AMD's fault. I love these comments because they are the most ignorant thing on the face of the earth. Yes, your new NVIDIA GPUs cost a lot of money, but that is your fault and anybody else's fault who did not buy an AMD card when they were priced to performance competitive. Now they are no longer priced to performance competitive, and now you have to deal with the market as it sits. You made your bed, now it's time to lay in it. I'm doing a little bit of gloating here because two years ago when Pascal launched, I warned everybody that this was likely to happen, and now here we are. Anyway, I wanted to bring this up one more time just to really hammer this home to you. Okay, so the RX 470s were selling as low as $120 right before the RX 580s and the 500 series launched. Uh, at $120, this GPU competes very well with the GTX 1060 3 gigabyte, which was selling for $199, and I think they were discounted somewhere around $180 at most. These guys had to be liquidated all the way down to $120. There's simply no reason why anybody should have bought a GTX 1060 over this card with their prices being lower. You got an extra gigabyte of RAM and performance is pretty much on par. Now, the fact that most people did not buy these and that's why they had to go this low to clear out inventory is the reason why you're paying what you're paying today. The bottom line here is that these new video cards will not have better price to performance than the current GPUs out there, especially with the incoming discounts that I'm sure we're going to be seeing. 10 series cards will perform better per dollar than these new Turing GPUs. However, Jensen made it very clear during this presentation that it's not a fair comparison. The new Turing architecture is so different that comparing it to Pascal simply doesn't make sense. That's why they came up with their new, you know, basic metric there, the RTX Ops. So it's really hard to say what's going to work for you. If you guys want the latest and greatest and you want all of the visual fidelity, you have to buy these GPUs. Newer games are going to take advantage of this moving forward. Now, the tricky part about this whole situation is, is seven nanometers. We already know that seven nanometers is in production and AMD is already using it. This is clearly not a seven nanometer product due to its large die size. And the fact that they're launching the 2080 Ti at launch and ignoring the people that would buy the 2080 and then upgrade to a 2080 Ti if it came out six, eight, nine months from now, that's missed revenue from Nvidia. This tells me that this is probably going to be a short life cycle. Because of how large the GPU die is, once they can affordably move to 7 nanometers, I think Nvidia will do that. This will net you higher clock speeds and possibly even higher core counts. I think that they'll probably keep the core counts about the same, but just shrink them down. This way it'll make things cheaper and more affordable, and then prices will hopefully go down a little bit. They probably won't, but it would be nice if they did. So it's up to you guys if this is a product that you're really interested in. Uh, for me personally, I don't spend more than $3.99 on a video card. Just not going to happen, will never happen. So I'll see what I can get for $3.99. If I can get a 1080 Ti, maybe I'll pick one of those up. So this way I can do, you know, some better CPU benchmarking. Um, you know, my RX 580, I'd have to do 720p to even come close to stressing out CPUs. But other than that, I don't really see any need for these GPUs other than to have that little extra feather in your cap saying that you can go ahead and play games with newer technology, better graphical fidelity than everybody else. You're going to pay a premium for that. It's your call. 
Well, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please share with friends. That really helps me out. Well, that's all I have for today. And I will catch you guys in the next video.